She's a four-time Emmy-winning former co-host of NBC's Today Show and, of course, the beloved co-host of Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. She wears many different hats. And in addition to being a TV legend, she's a playwright, a producer, singer, songwriter, an actress. Like all of us, she's had good times as well as bad, but her boundless energy she's now channeled into a new book, an inspirational title, out this week called The Jesus I Know, Honest Conversations and Diverse Opinions About Who He Is. I sat down with her recently in Nashville, Tennessee, to talk about the book, her life, her amazing career. Here's part one of my exclusive interview with Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> Kathy Lee, I want to start. The most surprising thing, I think, that I didn't realize, you were born half Jewish. Yes. And your Jewish traditions were always really important to you. My Jewish blood was. Hmm. It wasn't tradition so much in my family. It was just an understanding that in me flows ancient truths. Hmm. You said you were raised, though, in a godly home. Yes. What does that mean? That, that God was honored as an entity, as a being, that there was an other beyond us that, that was important. Um, uh, my father, uh, as, a, as an eight-year-old, had, had, had asked Jesus into his heart. We didn't know that for years later. Wow. He and his, his brothers and sisters had been kicked out of their mother's house after his father, his Jewish father, had left. Mm -hmm. And it was a hot summer day, and, and the mother said to him, go down to that little black church down the street, all of you. They've got vacation Bible school. Get out of here. You're driving me crazy. So they all did, and this little Jewish boy sat there, learned about Jesus, and accepted him. Uh, that day. We didn't know it for till years later. Wow. But but he was also the same boy as a 12-year-old that was walking around Capitol's Circle in Annapolis, Maryland, and had rocks thrown at him because he was a Jew. Mm. And people screaming at him, Christ killer, Christ killer. Mm. Yeah, so I grew up with um, an understanding of um, that, that I guess has really got us used in my heart to, to soften the lines between Jews and Christians um, but we're one story, Raymond. We're one mm -hmm. story. It's not that, that the Old Testament is the Jews and the New no. Testament belongs to the Christians. It's the continuation. It's one love story of God mm -hmm. for his for his beloved children. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because it, the Bible's been misinterpreted so much mm -hmm. and misused as a weapon, it's been weaponized. Like mm -hmm. we've, we've used politics and weaponized. Yep. We take the FBI and we have weaponized. You know, people have done that with, with the Bible for, mm -hmm. for millennia. And it breaks my heart. So that's p sort of at the basis of everything that I do now in my literary career yeah. is is trying to break down the walls and the in the and and, and the the myths and the, in, the things that are just that we continue to perpetuate that are just not true. Yeah. But people will say to me, Jesus was Catholic, right? And I go, <laughs> what? No, where'd you get that? But I learned it. I was in a Catholic church and it. And I said, well, Jesus, the Catholic Church did not come till long after Jesus was gone. And, and no, he was a Jew. What? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus was. I said, and here's a, here's a secret that's not a secret. So is his mother. Right. So is his earthly father. So are his brothers and sisters. Yeah. And all of the disciples yeah. and many of the apostles. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, and, and yes, they just don't know. Mm. The biblical illiteracy is beyond belief in it. It frustrates me. It angers me. Mm. Not at the people that are biblically illiterate because they just don't know. Yeah. But are the leaders. It always comes to the leaders that don't mm. lead. Mm. They don't. They mislead. Y your book, the right, Jesus I the Know. Jesus I Know. The first question you ask almost all of these people, and they are very famous people, some people we don't know. Yeah. Of uh, uh, Christian Channel with Megan Kelly. I mean, it's Chris it's, Jenner. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's really a a a, a it's wide a swath of You people. can say that. How did you choose who to ask and pose this question to? The same way I do anything in my life, Raymond. I pray, Lord, who do you want? Mm. When I'm going, my favorite trip ever to the Holy Land for a rabbinic study was uh, uh, a group of maybe 26 people, I don't remember the exact amount. Many of them are in this book because I said, Lord, I don't want to take people that already know so much. Mm. I want to take people that you love, but they don't know yet that you love them. Mm. But they're seekers. And, they, and so he, he put on my heart some peeps, friends of mine that were, that were uh, Scientologists, that were atheists, that were Sikhs, that were um, Hindu, mm. that were, 
you know, a Jewish heart, rabbi, Jewish <laughs> rabbis. I mean, it's just, I said, I remember each time I felt led to, and I'd go, really, Lord? He goes, yes. I go, okay. And it ended up being the most fascinating trip because when you study uh, rabbinically, for me, that means Rock, Road, and Rabbi, one, mm -hmm. a book that I wrote about. The I Rock remember. is Jesus, the, the Rock of all, the foundation for everything. The Road is the Holy Land. And uh, the Rabbi is not a particular Rabbi, it's rabbinic teaching, mm -hmm. meaning what the Greek and the Hebrew actually mean in the source material of the Bible. Mm -hmm. When you study that way, there's almost a chemical reaction that happens. Those three mm -hmm. things coming together form the most powerful experience I've ever had in my life, mm -hmm. every time I go. Mm -hmm. But I'd studied in Israel before, but not in that way, right. not rabbinically. And it was like, yeah, That's great nice. trip. Here's my Christmas card. <laughs> right, but the mm -hmm. lights came on. Oh, when I started studying rabbinically, mm -hmm. yes, everything changed. No, so I was fascinated. The whole Jewish tradition, which sheds light and gives meaning to everything that follows. Here's Without what, it, here, that's exactly. If we don't understand filter. what existed before, mm -hmm. we can't figure out what exists today because it all came from that. Mm. And, and Christians have not wanted to, 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 to understand that. And Jews on the other side have not wanted to understand that the, the Messiah proclaimed and 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 prophesied hundreds of times in the Old Testament is the one that the Christians believe in. Mm. And, and yet our common ground is our sacred ground. Mm. And so I take people that don't know that yet, and I don't teach them. Great, great, great rabbinical teachers do. You ask all of the people in your book, what, is your, what was your first impression of Jesus? Yes. You, I'm going to ask that too, because yeah. you had a first impression as a very small girl. I was very little. I must, I, we lived in Europe as, um, when I was, I was born, born in France. Born in Paris. Mm. And we lived in Jer Europe till I was five or six, and we moved to Annapolis, Maryland. And I remember one fall day raking leaves with my daddy outside of our house, and I, our very, very modest house. We couldn't believe we had a house. It was a rental house, but we had a house. Yes. And um, we were sh raking leaves, and I looked up, and I saw Jesus sitting on a cloud, like, a, like Indian, American Indian style. And just and making a fire, hmm. making a fire, and I looked up, and I and I knew it was him. But he and he looked at me. He looked, and I love these stories in the Bible when Jesus said, "Kathy." Hmm. That's my favorite line in the entire Bible to this day. Is when, when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, hmm. and was looking for the body of Jesus so she could, she could embalm him. She hmm. could, you know, anoint mm -hmm. his, his body with oil. Not embalm, but anoint him with oil. Hmm for burial, he'd already been buried, but they, that, was, that was Jewish culture. They, need, they mm -hmm. weren't able to do that before the Passover started mm -hmm. that night. And so that was her purpose going there. And it was dawn and she, she saw a, a, a somebody there. She assumed it was the gardener because it was a beautiful garden. And she said, where is my, my Lord? Please tell me where they've taken him and I will, I will go and, and get him. And Jesus just said one word, man. And she'd heard him say her name many times before. Mm -hmm. On the day that he cast out seven demons from her, he said, Mary, mm -hmm. you know, and, and put his hands on this woman who'd probably been touched in inappropriate and vile ways all of her life. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the, the hand of abject, pure love touches her and says, be set free. Be set free, daughter of Abraham, he would mm -hmm. call her. That's right. And she was, and as a result, she followed him with an ardor that is, is inexplicable and un only understandable to a person who'd been accursed mm -hmm. their whole life until he came along. Has your perception of Jesus, your initial impression of him changed as you've gotten older? It's deepened. I always loved him. I always thought he, I always thought he was the coolest guy in the room. Mm. He's a radical. I was kicked out of the brownies when I was eight. I relate to him. <laughs> I was kicked out of Sunday school when I said, I don't believe that that's what the Bible means. And mm. people are going, you're eight years old. What do you mean you don't believe it? I said, I don't know. I just, in my heart, I know Jesus wouldn't do that. He wouldn't curse a fig tree. He made a fig tree. He made a, the Bible says God loves everything he creates. Well, he, wouldn't, he would not hate a tree and he wouldn't curse it. Later I learned out rabbinically that, that tree in, in rabbinic studies in the first century AD represented the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Right. Jesus was symbolically saying, I curse 
the Pharisees and the Sadducees because mm -hmm. they're not feeding. Remember, Jesus was hungry. Mm -hmm. They're pe God's people. Mm -hmm. They are not feeding. In fact, they're, they're starving God's people. And if anything made the Lord angry, the only time he ever took up a, a weapon, and it wasn't towards a person. It was towards the money yeah. in the money changers' tables. He took, he put, took the, the whip to the tables and basically saying, you have made my father's temple, this house of prayer, into a mm -hmm. den of thieves. That's when Jesus got angry. That's, that's called righteous anger. Yeah. What, what surprised you most in this? I almost call it, it, it's really an inquiry. It's more than what's your impression of Jesus. It really is, what do you believe and why? Why do you think you went down that path and what surprised you? When I went to that little movie theater at the age of 12, I felt like I heard the name. I, I didn't feel like I knew. I heard Jesus Yeshua say to me, Kathy, I love you. And mm -hmm. if you'll trust me, I'll make something beautiful out of your life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've tried to make the message uh, to other people since then. It's, it's taken all kinds of forms. Mm -hmm. Either I say it on the Today Show in a weird way, I'm mm -hmm. able to, and nobody ever, nobody ever told me you can't say that, ever. In all the years, at all the networks, nobody ever said, uh -huh. mm, you might want to dial say. back Nobody the ever did. Mm. Never, ever did. The, I had a boldness that God gave me. And, and I, I'd see an opportunity. I'd go, ooh, clip that one in. And I'd go, well, you know, greater <laughs> is he that is. And I'd just start, yeah. I don't know. You fill up your life with scripture. You fill up your life with the essence of God, the Holy Spirit. It's going to express itself. It comes out. Yeah. yeah. I've done it on Broadway. I did it on movies. I've done it. Everything I've ever done, mm -hmm. I've asked to be a vehicle for that message. Raymond, or what any God loves you mm -hmm. and wants to make something beautiful out of your life. Mm -hmm. That is a message of hope. Awesome. That's not the message we get from our leaders today. Mm -hmm. they, they promise hope, they don't deliver hope. They promise that we know the way. They are, he is the way. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, no one comes unto the Father except through me. And people go, well, that's intolerant. I go, you don't realize what great news that is. The guy who loved you enough that left glory and died for you is going to be the one saying whether you make it into paradise or not. Trust that guy. Trust the one that actually loves you enough to have died for you. Hmm. I, I want to go back because you mentioned the beautiful life that the Lord said, look, I have all this for you if you'll trust me. Yeah. Well, you have trusted him. And it's taken you down fascinating paths you Waldo. never imagined. I'm Waldo. <laughs> you, I mean, who could have expected this? I want to start <laughs> with, name that tune. Oh, shoot. Okay? <laughs> okay? Your mentor, Tom Kennedy. Well, he wasn't my mentor. He, well, I read in articles he was your mentor. No, 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 no. It has been reported that. No, Not he's true. actually the reason I wasn't invited back to the show. That I've never said that publicly, but it's wow. true. Yeah. No, no, Ralph Edwards was my was, ah, Ralph Edwards was the, was a producer. Was the producer of that show. But it's an interesting story, and mm. this is not in any way to badmouth anybody, but yeah. truth is truth. Uh, I'm glad. I was ready to leave Hollywood. I had tried for a year, and I, I just was not m getting it there. And I'd, I'd go, and I'd audition, and time after time after time, I would not even get a callback. Then I'd start to get the callbacks. And the same girl, Nancy Morgan, <laughs> would get it every time. And I'd go, Lord, what does she have that I don't have? Well, she's talent, Kathy. But, no. <laughs> but aside from that, <laughs> aside from that, you're great. Yeah. So, I just, and and she'd sort of smile at me, and I'd smile at her, and she'd always get it. At the very end, she, I got five commercials, and the last week I'd given myself to stay in Hollywood and try mm. it. I could only do three, and the last one that I did, there's Nancy Morgan, and she just gives me one of those, like you did it, kid. And we we formed a nice relationship. I never hated her. I'm only yeah, kidding. Sure. I just was trying to learn. But after that, so I was working a little bit, not much. I certainly was I was working, but I wasn't having a career. Mm -hmm. And one day, finally, I, I, I had an audition for a children's show, and I went, I nailed it. <laughs> finally, I'm <laughs> on my way. It. Didn't even get a call back for uh -oh. it. And I went, Lord, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. I'm going home. And I remembered the man, one person from that from that call, and it was a, 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 he was the writer. I didn't know his name at the time, but he was very gracious. You can tell the people that are kind. Mm -hmm. Oh, kindness kills Rare. Me. Kills a rarity. Me. This is 40-some years ago. His kindness kills me. 1977, this happened. Mm. And, um, and so I was ready to give up, and I was finally leaving, and, and I, my agent calls me and says, um, um, Kathy, there's one last thing I want you to try. You're, you're up for something. It's a game show. And, and I said, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No, it's in, and I, it'd be at Ralph Edwards Productions at so-and-so and so-and-so. I said, okay. Have three songs ready. 
Okay. I go to, it was, it's not there anymore, it was right there where the Kodak yep. is now, is where Ralph used Kodak to be. Kodak Theater, yeah. Mm -hmm. I go in there and I look around and there's nobody in the casting room. I'm used to, you know, 40, 50 girls and I'm always the least talented <laughs> and by far the least attractive. Always, I every cast, oh, please do not mess with my truth. Okay. <laughs> it was the truth. I'm sitting there, I'm going, where is everybody? This woman comes over, she's uh, Kathy Epstein. I, was, I, was, uh, yep. I said, yes. She goes, um, Mr. Ro Mr. Edwards, I'll see you now. And I went, but what, am I in the right place? She goes, oh yes, it's just you. And I went, oh. Mm. I go in, I, I start to sit, I, I, there's a table of people always, to, these, they're awful, these, these, yeah. these calls. And this, I look over and there's this man and I recognize him. The writer from the, the other. The writer from, oh. from the children's show and he goes. Mm. And I went, oh. And I sing, I'm not even finished with my third song. Ralph Edwards comes over and he goes, welcome to the family. Name that tune. You're the new La La Girl. Wow. And it turns out that, that this man is named Gary Bloom. Mm. Gary Bloom said, when he watched me at the other audition, he said, you know what? Love this girl. She's got something, love her, but she's too sophisticated for this project. Mm -hmm. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to her. She's going to be right for something. Next thing you know, within a month, he's hired to be the writer, head writer on Name That Tune. Wow. And he had said to Ralph Edwards, don't even put out a casting call. I've got your girl. Wow. And, but Tom Kennedy? Tom Kennedy was the host. It was a big show. Didn't like Kathy Lee stealing his focus. You know what? I will. What was I, we, it? He was polite to me. He could not have been more gracious to me the year uh -huh. that we, that we worked together. The ratings year? went through the yeah, roof. I, know. I remember watching it. It became. I, I was a household name in America. Yeah. That like that because of, I learned two hundred songs in five days. Oh my god! And, and 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 the next year it was Tom that said I did. He didn't want me back. Mm, mm, mm. And that was okay. Then the Lord gave me hee haw honeys, and I came to Nashville. <laughs> you know, it, the, I, I mean, there there are those people that are that are um, really used of the Lord in your life. Mm -hmm. I think Tom was too. I was not supposed to stay there yeah. any longer than I was, mm. but he was not a mentor to me. Okay, no. I'm glad you corrected that. Yeah. Let's talk about. I mean, the thing everybody really. We started our days with you Regis. and Regis and Hoda, but you Long and Regis. This. Really, I mean, for us, it was, I would delay, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this on camera, 25 years this week, Kathy Lee. Good for you. I would delay my going to work to watch your opening. Our opening. And then I'd get in the car and go. Or, Thankfully, or, you weren't alone. <laughs> there were, I would have people come up to me and go, I watch you every day. These uh, suits, you know, these yeah. uh, Wall Street guys. I watch you every day. Hmm. I don't know why, why but do I you watch think you they did? every but day. But why do you think they did? I mean, <laughs> because we we made people laugh. Yep. We had fun, and fun is contagious. We weren't it trying is. to solve the world's problems. We never hurt anybody. Mm. We were never mean spirited. We made unbelievable fun of one another. It, it, you're right, but, but it, it was, was out of love. love. Yeah. Anybody tried to hurt Regis, I mean, they'd get hurt. Hmm. And and we loved each other dearly from day one. We hmm. never had a, a crossword in 15 years, and then went on to be even deeper friends for the next 20. I had lunch with him two weeks before he died. I know that. Yeah, so I mean, we just, that was meant to be. Here's another story about going back to the movie. Yeah. I mean, the book, the latest book. I can't keep yeah. these projects. Aren't I <laughs> supposed to be retired by now? But anyway, <laughs> is this a book or a, a movie I'm talking about? Beautiful lives are complicated. You Kathy know, Lee. and it's like nobody in the Bible ever retired. <laughs> They just died. Well, they died did, doing what God put them on the earth to do. They people holding their arms up, though, to do it. So I hope you have helpers. <laughs> yes, that's right. I do. Have, I've got a great team of people that love me and God right. bless them and support me. But the only other people that didn't die doing what they were, were taken up in a chariot of fire. So that's fine too. <laughs> I don't want to suffer. I'll let, whatever or the Lord. Of salt. There are a few of those people, but we won't get into that. They weren't in the service of God. Okay. Okay. I'm Fair just talking point. about the people that are called of God to, for, to, for His yes. kingdom building. Yes. Never retired. No. We refire, not retire. <laughs> okay? That's why you smell embers. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of St. Lawrence. You know, <laughs> turn me over. I'm done on this side. I'm you know that story. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't even know what this question you, you was. Were talking, we, were going, we were talking about Regis, and oh, yeah. you said there was something that happened when I was 12. Oh, about the book. Yes. About the book. I mean, why did I write do all these different people's stories? Mm -hmm. Regis grew up Catholic, yeah. and a lot of my friends closest friends are, are Catholic and, mm -hmm. and and it's not the way I grew up but the people I am loving dear precious yeah. people that that are Catholic mm -hmm. and 
but Regis was as Catholic as you could yes, get. Yes, I know. And, and, uh, and I love and love, continue to love Regis. Yeah, and you said he was depressed at the end. Because at, of the COVID well, because thing. of COVID and so many of his friends had died. But, but the conversations that I was able to have with Regis while he was alive made him totally secure, ultimately, of where he was going to go and who was going to greet him there when he went. And, you know, that's why I say we should not judge anybody else's journey. Mm. But the truth is, they're in your life for a reason. Mm. And our common ground is sacred ground. And Jesus did not call us to do anything but to share the hope that is within us mm. by telling people that God loves them. The Jesus I Know Honest Conversations and Diverse Opinions About Who He Is by Kathy Lee Gifford is available now at bookstores everywhere and online. We'll have part two next week. Thank you.